After years of putting myself through extremely painful and dangerous stunts, people commonly ask, what does your doctor think? Well, to be honest, I never go to the doctor after any of my videos, so I don't know. But to answer this question, I flew down to San Diego to meet up with Dr. ER to see what he thinks about all my painful shenanigans. Okay, so I'm here in San Diego with Dr. Jordan Wagner or Dr. ER on YouTube. And real quick, for my audience, perhaps if they haven't seen you before, can you give a really quick background on yourself? Perfect, so I'm an ER doctor, board certified in emergency medicine, trained all on the East Coast, and decided to come out to California. Yeah. Worked at multiple trauma centers, and I work at a huge uh, community hospital down by the, the border of Mexico and California. Awesome, and now you're on YouTube. Uh, now I'm on YouTube as a, a secondary job. So I work a full-time job. Most people don't realize this. Yeah. I actually work a full-time ER job and then do YouTube on the side. Awesome, sharing your insight with the world, which is perfect for me because for years, I've been doing very stupid things to myself. You know, sometimes I've been trying to prove my strength. Other times I do in the name of science, you know, hence the lab coat, very yeah. professional, yeah. just like yourself, yeah. maybe slightly less qualified. <laughs> You know, I do have a pretty prestigious degree from a community college in marketing and management. Maybe not as prestigious as yours, but uh, it's not the point. A lot of people have been curious. Houston, you're hurting yourself all the time, doing all these dangerous things. What does your doctor think? Okay, I think it's a very- I think that's a normal question yeah, to ask. it's a normal reaction, because normally people wouldn't do the things I do to myself, right? Right. So this is a perfect opportunity. I'm here with a doctor and we prepared some clips from my videos and I kind of want to get your reaction and your insight on my dumb stunts and experiments. Looking forward to it. I'll add as much insight as I can, especially from an emergency standpoint. Yes. Which is my specialty. This is gonna be great. Yeah. Quick context for this first video. I wanted to figure out just how bad rug burns can be. Uh -huh. You know, I think most people in their life have gotten a rug burn mm -hmm. here or there in various means or methods. So my goal was to create the worst rug burn I could physically possible. Okay, I don't get to see that many rug burns come to the emergency department. <laughs> oh, no? I will tell you that. <laughs> yeah, yes. that, that's a rare one. It doesn't happen that often. Usually the burn is from like a motorcycle accident. Gotcha. And you're sliding uh -huh. on uh -huh. So yeah. I wonder, we'll see if it's equivalent or not. Well, we'll, we'll see. Okay, yeah. well, we'll give this one a play. <laughs> <laughs> It's like you're repeating the damage. Different rugs. Oh. Awful. Oh, the tops <laughs> of the feet are probably the worst. Yeah, so I figured knee slides would be the best uh -huh. uh, way to uh, like deliver these burns onto myself. Yep. A uh, little oversight on my part, because it did end up on my feet quite a bit, huh. which was, as you said, very uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Knuckles, the toes, the tops of your foot, and now you have to walk on them. Yeah. Uh -huh. And put your socks on, which is on those burns. Yes. Turns out it's not great. Compelling. Compelling. Compelling indeed. <gasps> <gasps> Come on. It's a smart method. Ah, it's, working. <laughs> it's working. I would try to avoid the carpet or rug burns. Uh, quite uncomfortable. <laughs> so as you can see, three days after the experiment, the burns on my knees and feet turned into oh, pretty nice. big scabs. And five days later, guess what? They're still yep. scabs <laughs> and will probably be scabs for a few weeks. Awful. Yeah, so I have a couple questions. Yes, here. ask. These are friction burns. Mm -hmm. Do the friction burns differ from like an actual like burn from like a fire heat? So the, the mechanisms are different because you're already abrading all the tissue and it's mm -hmm. already gone. It's gone versus the the heat from say the sunburn or like a fire burn, you're actually killing the tissue and then over time it actually like gets worse and gotcha. the tissue will die. Uh -huh. So it just depends and actually how the exposure of the sun, the exposure of the heat element gotcha. will also you know change mm -hmm. how badly the burn is. Mm -hmm. Like we see a lot of oil burns, we see a lot of like hot water burns. Gotcha. And so it takes a little bit of time for set in versus uh -huh. this. You've just... Yeah. All right, Doc, be real with me. <laughs> How bad do you think those burns were? Is it like, because there's like the first, second, third degree scale. Right. I kind of speculated maybe in the second degree territory. Yeah. Myself. So you're getting close. So first, first degree burn is basically just redness. There's just superficial damage to the top. Second degree, you're getting further down, and that's where you don't see as much blood per se in those other types of burns that you think of, but you're getting through that top layer of tissue issue and you're not going all the way down to burning off the nerve ending. So gotcha. it's kind of somewhere in there. But again, it's a little bit different mechanisms. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So this one in particular took me about like a month and a half to fully heal from. Yes. I had the mistake of, you know, the scabs would get ripped off. Uh, I would did bandage them for a few days, uh -huh. but you know, as they were kind of healing, I stopped and then 
put some pants on, take my pants off, rip off the scab, and then oh, it's a scab okay. again. Yes. So that this one was pretty awful for me. Right. Uh, this was like a very regrettable uh, experiment. Yep. But I did learn a lot, and what I learned is rug burns are pretty bad. Awful. Yeah. So my recommendation the next time if you try to one up this uh -huh. experience is one if you don't want your feet to get burned, cover them. Right? <laughs> yeah, okay. 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 But then knees. Knees are awful because you're always bending. Mm -hmm. You're always flexing, bending. Yes. And so they take a very long time to heal. You can even see on your scab where there's multiple cracks uh -huh. in that scab and the knees just because of the bending. Gotcha. You don't want them to dry out. Mm. You want them to be covered, moisturized at least twice a day with either a topical antibiotic ointment or even just like a Vaseline. Gotcha. And it'll heal faster. The other component, the ones on your feet that had that nasty white looking stuff uh -huh. on it, that's actually epithelialization. That's like your cells are actually trying to grow back. It's not pus and it's not infected. It's just trying to scab up and grow new skin. Okay. Yeah. That's actually true because I think my, you know, my uneducated brain here, you see the whiteness. It almost seems like it's infected. Correct. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think uh, from the viewer experience, they might have thought that as well. Right. So it is actually just my body trying to recover. Correct. <laughs> so if it was bad infection and you had, you know, purulent material, aka mm -hmm. pus coming, the tissue around it will actually be significantly red, not just the edges. So your yeah, edges yeah. being red, fine. It's trying to heal. But if you started getting cellulitis, which is an infection of the skin, it would start spreading really red and be nasty and painful. Okay, yeah, and that's what I don't want. That's what you don't want. Awesome. Okay, we'll move on to the next right. one. Learned a lot there. The main component in a lot of sour foods, candies, is this thing called malic acid. It's like the raw ingredient. I was able to buy it in bulk. It is just essentially an acid, yep. and you know, you can taste it. So I figured, you know, Let's see what that does to my mouth. Big strong science man, big strong science man, big strong science man, big strong science man. It was bad right away. Wait, what did that immediately felt burning sensation? It was the, so leading up to this, I did put it in my mouth a few times beforehand. Uh, this one was like the biggest scoop I had done yet. And right away, it was the sharpest pain. Uh. It was so sharp and stinging would be a way I could describe it, but it was like an immediate, almost panic reaction to get it out of my mouth. Got it. Yeah, because you're just it's significantly changing the pH environment mm -hmm. and burning your tissue probably. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we got good results from it. Oh gosh. Oh God. I just pulled off a layer of tongue. Wow. Uh, that was right away. <laughs> That's a chunk of skin. Ew, Immediate burn. No, uh -huh. I don't want to watch anymore. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> Cameraman was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, the roof of your mouth. Uh -huh. Awful. The tongue. Uh -huh. The bottom of my tongue. Oh. Mm -hmm. So this one, uh, real quick. I previously uh, talked about this and how bad the pain was. This was one of my worst videos I've done. Uh, wow. For the the fact that uh, I couldn't eat, physically eat food for days. My mouth was so sore. Uh, the gums. I almost think I stripped some of my enamel off, to right. be honest, just because the teeth they felt rough. Interesting. Yeah, they weren't like uh, the, 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 the the surface of yeah. them. Yeah, mm -hmm. the polish was gone. Uh huh. Oh. Uh, for a few days, almost a week, and uh, it was as painful as it was in the moment. It was exponentially more painful after trying right. to heal from it. Right, which is classic with burns. Yeah, right? burns, yeah. They take a little bit of time uh -huh. to set in. You get the initial reaction of like, get away from it, which is good, but then the damage will now show, show. up. Show, oh, yeah. And you're like, oh, thanks a lot. And we get, <laughs> we get people who get all the different types of, you know, uh, hydrofluoric acid, all these different acid burns, mm -hmm. and literally there are different ways to actually treat them. So depending on the acid itself, sometimes you have to use calcium to then counteract mm. it and these different slurries and whatnot. And if you put water on it, it can actually make it worse versus you have to use other, you know, different bases versus an acid. We even at times have to look certain things up because you need to understand the, the specific chemical makeup and know, okay, what will react or not react to something. Gotcha. Because we don't want to hurt you more. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so the question ends up being in that situation, could we come up with a slurry that you can wash around your mouth uh -huh. and actually help reduce the, the effect? And then I don't know it specifically, but does water actually make the reaction worse or not? I can tell you one thing, it didn't make it feel any better. Yeah, yeah. So then you're like, okay, you're just cleaning it off yeah. and get it off there, which is fine, uh, but it didn't neutralize it or do no, anything. No, yeah. One thing, uh, obviously I lost a lot of skin in my mouth. Yep. Was that just from the reaction to the acid burning away, burning away my yes. skin? Yes, so the skin sloughing off is mm. the, the, the nice terms okay, that we yeah. use, um, is definitely related to the acid just burning it off and generating new tissue. So. Mm -hmm. That'll be okay. The mucosa in the mouth itself is so resilient that it grows back in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. um, 
versus anywhere else on your body, different story. Mm. And then any further damage that you could potentially do, your esophagus, your stomach, mm. those, yes. are other, those are other concerns yeah. that I would think. The acid in your stomach is pH of closer to like four. Okay. So your pH of the malic acid in a liquid form, potentially, we'd have to look it up, mm -hmm. but it could be that low. So it may neutralize it, but on the way down. Mm. It's more the esophagus that yeah. you're going to be causing issues and it's going to cause the same problem. Optimal range pH of malic acid consumption is three. Oh yeah, so f you up. <laughs> <laughs> For this video, uh, I had the opportunity to meet up with a former UFC middleweight champion, Luke Rockhold. Cool. He's been known to KO people with liver kicks. Oh. So I had the genius idea. I was like, what if he liver kicks me? Okay. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. He's just, he's, he's measuring. Yeah, he's measuring. Okay. <gasps> oh, that's such a bad idea. <laughs> that's such a bad idea. Ow. <laughs> like go to the hospital. <laughs> Were you flexing right when he hit you? I was. Okay. Yeah, I was tightening up. Okay. Oh god, I might shit myself. <laughs> Give me one more punch. No, no, not that. I'll show you the good no, one. No, no, save the punch for big boy. Man. Take it. Oh. oh okay, okay not so bad. Oh. Oh, that was the one. Because you took a breath. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Uh, down, down <laughs> for the count. Ouch. <laughs> oh, the, 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 the bell, bell went off on us. <laughs> I'm so strong. <laughs> Hardly noticeable at all. Can't even see. Okay, Only good. aches a little bit. Can you tell? <laughs> right? That looks good. Did he even kick me? Did he even kick me? Because <laughs> you're solid. That was all just a... Uh, my ribs were sore for about a week. Yep. That third kick was actually the most painful. Okay. I um, mean, the way he described it, it was like after you've already damaged the, the liver, those preceding kicks only add to that pain, makes it worse yeah. once it's agitated. Sure. Uh, and I kind of felt that firsthand. Right. Possible repercussions here. Got it. So when I look at this and you get hit, first thing you think of is rib fractures because mm -hmm. your ribs are protecting your liver. Yeah. So that's actually taking a lot of the brunt. So then when your liver gets hit, it's more of a blunt trauma, as long as you didn't fracture a rib, because the fractured rib could then stab and puncture okay, yeah. the liver. Uh -huh. So those are things in my brain. Uh -huh. And then also, since there's, I'm still on the rib topic, it can actually puncture your lung and cause a pneumothorax or a hemothorax, mm -hmm. or both a hemopneumothorax. So those are the things you worry about. So then you're okay, now you have your liver, because it's a liver kick. It's blunt trauma, so your liver is a big juicy we see pictures <laughs> of, the, of like yeah. blood right uh -huh. and it's a, our body's major filtration system so you can cause a bruise good that bruise can cause um ischemia to that area meaning like no blood flow mm -hmm. but the liver regenerates it yeah. itself so as long as you're not killing your liver liver on a daily basis in the sense of like i'm drinking you know full bottles of booze every single day um <laughs> um, uh, um I may have been drinking some whiskey. That's okay, but okay. I'm talking every single day okay, to where right, you don't do that. Yeah, to where your liver is becoming like cirrhotic, where okay. it's not functioning anymore. Then it won't regenerate. But if you cause you go out and party with your friends and you have some drinks, you cause a little bit of damage to the liver. The body will then fix itself. Gotcha. But it's repetitive issues. So same idea here. If there's a potential, if you did some blood work. Do because of the damage at that time, do the liver function tests go up? It may. Mm -hmm. um, so you're looking at your AST, your ALT, um, even your PT, INR. These are blood tests that you look to see function of the liver. If it ruptures and we have a liver rupture, then you'll actually start getting bruising of the abdomen. You could probably potentially see it through the wall and you get blood inside the abdominal cavity, which would cause significant amount of pain. Yes, I would imagine so. Right. So without that and the way you're moving, you don't have a tense abdomen, it's fine. But would the, uh, having more muscle protecting you actually help in a situation like this? Yeah, so being having more muscle, dense muscle, and contracting at the right time mm -hmm. is all protective. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even muscle, even not advocating being obese or okay, overweight, but it, but it, could, it will protect you. Insulated to some degree? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, so in this situation, it is beneficial not to be super skinny. Yeah, it's actually, yeah. Muscle. I think uh, some people have been challenged to get kicked in the liver uh, from various UFC fighters and stuff uh -huh. in the past. What I would recommend is just don't do it. I mean, I get hurt for a living and it killed almost like, knock, knock me to my butt, you know, and I did not have a good time. Yeah. So, you know, I think uh, we learned from my 
Terrible mistake. Alrighty, for this next one, I wanted to make the world record for the world's largest bruise in surface area. Just like a big one. Big old bruise. Okay. All connected, purple and beautiful. Okay. That's not gonna do it. <laughs> You're right. Just, just hurt. It just hurt. Just gave, yeah, you, just gave, gave your team and your friends yeah, uh, yeah, to yeah. smack you around. Some nice slow-mo slap footage. But look at the muscles. The <laughs> yeah. definition's uh -huh. good. This was shortly after my arm break, so Got I it. actually downsized a little bit. Oh, Ooh, that would hurt. what the? Oh, the leather <laughs> yeah. belt. Yep, weightlifting belt. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I do like your socks. <laughs> Thank you. <gasps> oh, they drew on you. Yeah, like, we made a grid, so yeah. this is their targets. Got it. It's quite smart. Mm -hmm. Look how badly you're extending it <laughs> because it hurts so much. Yeah. <laughs> it's like raw tissue now. Yeah. It's so much more painful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what does the data suggest? Well, the data suggests that our accuracy is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> He's laughing. Okay, okay, okay. So the footage you're seeing right now <gasps> was taken four days after the initial. Started to experiment. change colors. And as you uh -huh. can see, while my entire back is in fact discolored and bruised, really only the sides of my back have that dark discoloration and bruising. This is the thickness. Mm, yeah, so that was a big question. And this, yep. when I did this, I was kind of upset with myself. Okay. We spent an obscene amount of time trying to make that bruise. Uh huh. And I was like, this bruise is not perfectly connected. Uh, right. After all my efforts, mm -hmm. you know, to try to make the bruise. So then at that point, I speculated, uh, could it have been body composition in my back? I would like you to weigh in on the, why right. the bruise right. is worse in some areas and not. Right, so bruising on the back, the tissue's different. You're basically recruitment of where your fat cells are, mm -hmm. where the capillaries are, or your blood vessels. So some in certain areas are more or less, depends on your body. Some are more superficial versus deep. It really just depends on you. And then the question ends up being thickness of your skin. So what's actually showing up? Mm -hmm. Are they deeper so they're protected? So it's really hard to get this beautiful bruise yes. that you want <laughs> yeah. without really injecting something under the tissue to have gotcha. it Because yeah. they don't really flow necessarily together. Mm -hmm. Some do, but when we look at the tissue, the easiest way I can describe it is on a CT scan where you can actually see where everything is like interconnected, but it actually has pockets where things mm -hmm. can actually stay. And so it doesn't just like form this nice area. So it's almost like I was going after an unachievable goal there. Yes. Or at least a very difficult one. Very, very difficult one without causing so much significant trauma to yourself that would yeah. be detrimental. Yeah. Because you also, for me, I think about muscle breakdown underneath. Mm -hmm. So you're causing you know, superficial trauma, but you're also hitting all your muscles. Mm -hmm. And you've heard of rhabdo as a weightlifter. Yes. Um, that if you have too much muscle breakdown, then you're gonna increase the risk of having renal failure and all these other things that mm -hmm. you do not want, so. If a person walked into the ER, with a bruise like that on the back. Is, is that even typical, the size of that bruise? So first thing is like, are they safe? Yeah. So yeah. First, <laughs> we think about like, are they safe at home? Are uh, they getting beat up? Is uh, that safe? Okay, yeah. You know, that sort of thing. Uh, so we mm -hmm. talk about that. Um, and then yes, you know, from traumas, we'll see that, but typically it's after a couple of days or um, people who have surgeries. Uh, mm. Different type of surgeries that can cause these type of this type of bruising, liposuction sometimes because they're destroying all the tissue and causing bruising. Um, I've seen some really bad effects of bad plastic surgery, especially okay. where I work mm -hmm. near Mexico. Mm -hmm. and people go down there for surgeries and they come back with complications to us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this what that wasn't so bad from a bruising standpoint. Mm -hmm because it didn't bruise as what you'd expect. Yes. But some people will just be coated with bruise everywhere and mm -hmm. you're like, oh my gosh. And yeah. then we'll do an image and see that it's like super dense and super thick layers of blood on their neck. Oh, okay, yes. so it's almost like pooled right. right there. Pools in certain pockets and it depends on the mechanism. So your mm -hmm. mechanism with these very pinpoint shots, mm -hmm. it's only causing each individual spot gotcha. versus if somebody's in there with you know, the liposuction stick basically, where they're ripping through everything and it'll interconnect. This is great. I've been speculating on bruises for the past, <laughs> past few months here, just, I, cause I get bruised a lot. Right. And then I'm thinking of like, why do some bruises turn out some ways yep. and then not the others? We learned a lot here today, everyone. All right, this next video, I wanted to find out what pry bars and crow bars could do. If there could be a practical, you know, self-defense tool. Okay. Oh! oh. <laughs> Just oh, a little probe, just a little, yeah, a little, little, little bit harder. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh my, okay. <gasps> oh my. That's worse. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. What? 
were you flexing? No. Yeah. That okay. was relaxed. Yeah. And that was the sharp end. <gasps> <laughs> and on my left Gosh. shoulder, I have a small bruise from the tiny pry bar. <laughs> on my right shoulder, I have a much more significant bruise yep. and scabs from okay. the larger pry bar. And lastly, on my leg, I have fairly significant bruises from the large standard crowbar. Wow. I wouldn't uh, expect that. The for what one? The shoulder. The shoulder. Yeah, uh, I kind of speculated on that one. The pry bar was lighter. It seemed to me like uh, the heavier blunt weapons I've tested yep. have done less superficial bruising, a lot, lot more swelling. Mm -hmm. uh, lighter stuff like that pry bar has been more superficial and visible. Right. To yes. Me. It kind of makes more sense. So the the heavier weighted crowbar. It's gonna get deeper into tissue, into the muscles, so it's gonna cause tissue damage deeper versus these superficials. They're not getting at all deep into the muscle, but it's just popping these capillaries and mm -hmm. the superficial blood vessels. And that's why you're seeing that bruising because on other things that you've done where you've taken heavier weights to your shoulder, mm. it didn't bruise as bad. No. Versus this little thing that seems to be slapping your yeah. shoulder. <laughs> uh, stings really bad, yeah, yeah. stings, but uh, I would definitely say like, uh, like I've done whips and yeah. stuff as well. Uh, recovery from that, pretty easy. It definitely hurts a lot in the moment, very sharp right. pain, but uh, something heavy like a crowbar. Uh, the swelling seems a little bit deeper. Awful. Uh, I've actually experienced uh, in the past uh, muscular ossification. Okay, yeah, yeah, so you get a hematoma and then the hematoma actually calcifies. Basically. Yes, yes, I've experienced that a few yeah. times yeah. from some of these. Yeah. Uh, it's always gone away. Okay, good, uh, yeah. okay. Is, uh, but I tend to realize like the, the blunt objects are, I think, you would expect this, but much more damaging yep. and dangerous than yeah. something that has less weight behind it. Yeah, 100%, and you worry about like your bone underneath, mm -hmm. the nerve that's potentially gonna get hit, and you can cause something called neuropraxy, which is like trauma to the nerve itself, and mm -hmm. have like like stroke-like symptoms below that sort yeah. of thing, so it's like, yeah, just be careful. But it's, it is interesting, it's good that there's different body parts that you're using, so to speak, you know, big muscles, and so the underlying structures are more protected mm -hmm. um, versus if you're gonna try to use your forearm, like bad idea. Yeah, I've learned the forearms aren't as sturdy. I didn't mean to bring up a, <laughs> a bad, bad history on that. <laughs> it's all good. All right, moving on. Next one, really cool one. Uh, I had the opportunity uh, to get tased in the back by chocolate. I love how you say opportunity. The opportunity. Like you were lining up for this. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> Five seconds. A five second hold. Yeah. Hit me, Chuck. <gasps> oh, oh, and you landed on him. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Who said? Oh, it's how we it was a uh, Kentucky ballistics. Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was intense. <laughs> Who told you to fall backwards? Right now. I'll have you know. Uh, oh. 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 Like, pr like prongs, yeah. like hooks. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. We pull them out of people oh, yeah. <laughs> on the weekend. <laughs> if you go slow, it hurts worse. <laughs> yep. You ready? Yep. Ready, Houston? Go. Oh. Oh. Even the feeling of pulling yeah. it out. Did you get it? Bro, that was in there deep. <laughs> that, you fell on that. That's the entire barb, yeah. Yeah, you it's got good. it all. It didn't break off on you. Uh, so, it looks like the taser squirted some uh, blood on my back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't bleed. Everyone knows that. You don't bleed, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. yeah. yeah. At least not in that video. <laughs> wow. I bet you fell backwards due to your own contractions. I think so. Yeah, so if you, because you're hitting your back, you pull mm -hmm. backwards and it's contracting and just the your massive back muscles probably yeah. have so much contracted weight to pull you back. I think I looked out too, because the way I contracted, I curled my head up. Uh -huh. So when I fell backwards, my yeah. head, my skull didn't make yeah. contact yeah. onto the, the ground. Otherwise, I think I would have been a lot worse. Right, so it depends if you cause like whiplash. There. Yeah. But how did it feel? The best way I can ex uh, describe getting uh, tased is it's the absolute worst for as long as the electricity is running and yep. once it's done it's you feel fine it's like yeah, it's over it's over instantly. yeah yeah so it's like the worst east dim mm. right yes uh -huh. that you've because i have an east dim actually in the house somewhere, <laughs> but, but from muscle contractions yes, right yeah. so same idea it's that you're having two probes mm -hmm. that need to be connected mm -hmm. to cause that so they split mm -hmm. and then that's the firing so that's probably yeah. why you were able to use your muscles of your neck to go mm -hmm. this way otherwise it would have 
if they're in between, you couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Any general risks for people getting tased in general? So I've seen a lot of people got, get tased. Like, mm -hmm. The end product where they show up to the ER, yeah. and we actually, in certain counties, I've worked in the hospital actually has to take them out. The mm -hmm. law enforcement, yeah. they're not allowed to. And I've never seen any complications, but there's always a concern you're having energy, energy relating to your heart. Mm -hmm. Is there, could it cause a cardiac arrhythmia? There's always a relative risk of that. Yeah, gotcha. So just have to be careful. Obviously, if you're getting shot closer to your heart, mm -hmm. could that energy? you know, trip over your own electrical impulses. It could, and mm -hmm. it can go into a, you know, V-fib, um, V-tac, or cause, you know, asystole, so. Gotcha. Be careful. So one closing thought on for this video. Um, so someone with more muscle mass, would they have more of a reaction to being tased opposed to someone who has skinnier? Right. So on? Yeah, so somebody who's got more muscle mass because of the electricity that's being, you know, given, mm -hmm. it's depolarizing muscles and you have more muscle contraction. So if you have, more tissue to contract, you're gonna have a bigger response. Gotcha. So between the two of us, you guys know I'm <laughs> jacked. Um, I'd probably have a less of exp less of a reaction mm -hmm. than you would have a reaction. Tasers can be more effective on a more muscular person. Correct. Everything was working against me in that video. <laughs> All right, so last question. Based off everything you've seen, uh, do you think I'll have any long-term health complications? So from getting sh you know soft tissue injuries, probably not. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing actually is probably your arm <laughs> that will probably cause the most uncomfortability moving forward just uh -huh. because you have a foreign body in there, right? Yeah, yeah, There's a piece of metal. metal. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as long as, you know, getting kicked in the liver didn't cause any mm -hmm. damage per se, and getting shot in the back, you're being protected from your kidneys. Outside of that, the soft tissue stuff is probably unlikely going to cause long-term issues. Some short-term issues you always worry about mm -hmm. is have to do with muscle breakdown, kidney function. And my own tidbit of adding mm -hmm. is moving forward as you continue to do this, I would, now that you're seven years into this mm -hmm. and moving forward in age, yes, I would maybe see a doctor a little bit more mm -hmm. frequently or get blood tested and be like, hey, let me just check, make sure my kidney function, my liver function, and all these other numbers are just on par. On par, awesome. This has been great. This has been great. We learned a lot, uh, honestly. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate thank you so it. Thank much for having me. We also did, reacted to more of my videos over on Dr. Wagner's channel, Dr. ER, that will be linked uh, up here somewhere. <laughs> Click it, watch it, it's a great time. We went over a lot of other stuff. I think you'll enjoy it. And make sure you subscribe to him as well. But that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed probably the most educational yeah. video I've ever put yeah. on this channel. I loved it, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad I could react to him getting hurt. Yeah, that's well, that's great. what happened. Yeah, yeah. I got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.